Obedience, the basis of child rearing, except for from how to rear a child. Whatever God did to Adam and Eve, the firstborn children, every father is doing the same to his children. It is perfectly right to say God the Father. Both have a similarity. Every father should be called Father the God. From biblical days, obedience is considered the essence of child rearing. This is the cause of our present day chaos. Obedience has become the basis of bringing up children, and that is the wrong basis. Instead of obedience, intelligence and rebelliousness should be the basis of growth. The children should say yes only when his intelligence says yes. Otherwise he should not be forced and he should be allowed to say no and his, and his yes or his no has to be respected. He is a guest from an unknown world, a visitor, a guest to your family. Treat him as a friend and a guest. He has every right to say no or yes. And you have to make it completely clear. And you have to make it completely clear that whatever he says will be respected. Otherwise we create yes says that is a spiritual slavery. In offices they are saying yes to the boss. In the homes they are saying yes to the wife or husband. They have forgotten completely that the word no exists. And it is a strange that no defines you, gives you a clear cut personality, yes dissolves you. One should first learn to say no. Your yes is meaningful only when you are also capable of saying no. If you are incapable of saying no, then your yes, then your yes is a robot-like yes and it is meaningless. This was a short excerpt. I will continue with another excerpt. Sharing your life with the child. Excerpt 5. Excerpt from how to rear a child. Sharing your life with the child. It takes tremendous courage to say, depend on your intelligence. Even if you go astray, it is far better than to remain a slave. It is better to commit mistakes on your own and learn from them, rather than follow somebody else and not commit mistakes. To follow someone is slavery. Slavery is poisonous to the growth of consciousness and your Buddha. The crux of child rearing is not how to help the children grow. They will grow without you. Your function is to support, to nourish and to help what is already growing. Never give directions and your ideals. Never tell them what is right and what is wrong. Let them find it by their own experience and awareness. You can do only one thing and that is to share your own life. 
Tell them that you have been conditioned by your parents, that you have lived within certain limits, according to certain ideals, and because of these limitations and ideals, you have missed life completely, and you do not want to destroy your children's lives. You want them to be totally free, free of you because to them you represent the whole dead past. It needs courage and immense love in a father, in a mother to tell the children you need to be free of us. You need to be free of us. It takes tremendous courage to say do not obey us instead depend on your own intelligence. Even if you go astray, it is far better than to remain a slave and always remain right. It is better to commit mistakes on your own and learn from them, rather than follow somebody else and not commit mistakes. Then you are never going to learn anything except following. And that is poison, pure poison. To follow someone is slavery. Slavery is poisonous to the growth of consciousness and your Buddhahood. It is very easy if you love. Do not ask how, because how means you are asking for a method, a methodology, a technique, and love is not a technique. Love is flowing of your innerness and awareness. This was the next excerpt.